in a few years from now, you will be able to walk into a doctor's office and instead of getting a prescription to a common drug, you might have the doctor prescribe you a medicine which is custom made to your genetic type and the problem you're facing. And a few years ahead from there, we will be able to actually create our own elements like vibranium or others to solve specific problems of mankind and earth. This isn't science fiction. Welcome to a mind-bending journey into the simplified version of the world of quantum computers. They are here, they are now, and although not as widely understood as AI, they are undoubtedly the largest lead that humans will take since the invention of electricity. This is an overview of how they work, what is our modern computers, why are they revolutionary, and how they will change the future of each human. So buckle up, the world as you know it is about to change. Before we dive into the quantum realm, let's ground ourselves with something familiar. Classical computers. This will relatively help us understand quantum computers much better. Classical computers are what most of us use every day. And when we are referring to computers, we are referring to every modern computing device, like a PC or a mobile phone. They rely on bits. Be with me. Bits create language of their own called as the binary language, the foundation of most digital devices we use. Bits are formed using tiny switches that can be either on for a value of 1 or could be off to a value of 0. Physically, these bits are represented by transistors, tiny devices on silicon chip that control the flow of electricity. When the electricity flows, the transistor represents a 1 and when it doesn't, it represents a 0. This straightforward system creates the foundation of classical computing tasks. These bits work together in circuits controlled by many gates like AND, OR, NOT, which eventually leads to the binary language which converts what instruction we type for the computers to really understand. For example, irrespective of it being a phone or a computer, they all follow the rules of binary language. And if a letter E has to be understood by the computer through these gates, the computer understands the uppercase of letter A equals to 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, which uses 8 bits and an uppercase of letter Z as 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. For sake of simplicity, all of this happens using circuits made with elements like refined silicon. With these simple flow of electricity components, classical computers perform calculations step by step following an algorithm to solve problems. Imagine following a cocktail recipe. Each step must be understood and done in an order, one ingredient at a time to create the final drink. That's just how the modern computer's programming languages also work. They follow the first line of a code and then the next and then the next. But they do it so fast with the advancement in the technology that we feel for most users, it happens instantaneously. But give it a complex problem like calculating all airline routes and traffic around the world and see how humans can optimize travel for their fuel efficiency that would take some of the best computers of today even several days to just skim through all that data and try all combinations one by one to provide us an answer. Now let's take this idea and expand it into the quantum world. To understand how quantum computers work, we need to explore their key components. Just like how we understood bits of ones and zeros for our computers, quantum computers work through qubits. Quantum bits. Basic unit of quantum information. Qubits are like the brain cells of quantum computers. Just like silicon was used for modern day chips, quantum qubits are made from tiny particles such as electrons, ions, and photons and are manipulated to represent information. Commonly used materials for qubits include superconducting circuits made from aluminium or niobium and trapped ions of elements like ytterbium or calcium. Unlike classical bits that we just learned are either zeros or one, here's the fascinating part. Qubits can be 1, 0, or both at the same time. This is called superposition. Stay with that word for a minute. Think of a regular light switch that's either on or off. A qubit is like a dimmer switch that can hold every level of brightness between on on off at the same time. Or imagine a spinning coin like this that hasn't landed. While it is spinning, it's not just head or tails, it's both at the same time. This is how qubits work, holding all possibilities until they are measured or looked onto. 
and it's achieved through precision control of these particles. Scientists use lasers, magnetic fields, or microwave pulses to manipulate qubits, which are basically photons or electrons, into a state where they simultaneously represent multiple possibilities. Now, you already know classical computers use gates like AND and OR to process binary bits. You remember this from the letter A. Quantum gates operate on qubits. There are several gates as listed, which are used to manipulate a qubit to ensure they can be utilized for specific functions. Two of the most fascinating use cases of these gates have been to achieve superposition, which we just discussed, and entanglement. A special connection between qubits with the state of one affects the other instantaneously, even if they are at a wide distance. Entanglement is one of the most fascinating aspects of quantum mechanics. When two qubits are entangled, the state of one directly determines the state of the other, even if they are separated by vast distances. Imagine two perfectly synchronized clocks. If you change the time on one clock, the other clock instantaneously changes to match it, even if it's on the other side of the world. Not just matching the state of other qubits, it has a relative effect on the other qubits as well. Another example to consider will be if two qubits are entangled, then when one changes its color, the other will instantly change to its relative state. This magical connection is similar to entanglement in quantum mechanics. It allows quantum computers to process information in ways that classical computers just cannot. Now, qubits are incredibly sensitive to their surroundings. Disturbances like temperature changes, electromagnetic interference, or even cosmic rays can cause qubits to lose their delicate quantum properties, a phenomenon known as decoherence. To keep them stable or coherent, quantum computers operate at near absolute zero temperatures to about minus 273 degrees. That's colder than outer space as well. This extreme cooling is essential for reducing thermal noise, which can disturb the qubit's delicate quantum state. Without this cooling, qubits would quickly lose their superposition and the entanglement properties, rendering them completely ineffective for any quantum calculations. Now let's talk about something called as error correction. Even after all these precautions taken to keep the coherence, Sometimes qubits will lose their state and not act in a way where they can produce the right results. This is where error occurs in calculations, and this is one of the biggest differences between the modern-day computer and quantum computer. Modern-day computer processes binary language and do not produce many errors. And as quantum computers work with large problems, their errors can also be significant. This is a huge challenge for scientists to solve in the future. To address this, quantum computers use advanced error correction methods. This includes encoding a single logic qubit into multiple physical qubits, much like adding extra support for better prediction of answers. Imagine like listening to a perfect orchestra. If one musician plays the wrong note, the overall melody, which is a logical qubit, remains intact because the other musician's physical qubits compensate for it. The conductor, in this case, the error correction algorithm, will ensure harmony is still produced. This creates redundancy, allowing the system to detect and fix errors without directly measuring the quantum state. Unlike classical operation systems like Windows or Mac OS, quantum systems need to coordinate operations between what we humans mostly are used to and operating in, which is bits, and merging that information into qubits, which is like mixing and making sense of both information from bits and qubits together. Companies like IBM and Google have developed their own platforms like IBM Quantum Experience and Google Cirque, which integrate special quantum programming environments. This is another area like the error correction where most of the efforts are undergoing today to improve our communication to qubits in a way where we can easily program and understand the data coming out of it. Because of these two reasons, one which is the cooling required to ensure to maintain coherence, and the second one is error correction, Quantum computers for a long time wouldn't be like AI applications that any one of us can simply access over the internet because that entire system still follows the law of bits only. But all of these efforts and race for achieving quantum level computational prowess is really for what? And how will it make a difference than the traditional computers which we already have? Quantum computers are poised to revolutionize some of these fields. The first one, medicine. Quantum computers can stimulate molecular level structures at the level of a detail that classical computers cannot achieve. 
Because molecular structures like atoms follow the laws of quantum mechanics, it becomes very difficult to be able to understand them using our classical computers. This capability of quantum computer will allow researchers to explore complex chemical reaction and design newer drugs much faster, potentially leading to cure for diseases that currently lack effective treatments. Additionally, they will be able to help in personalized medicine by tailoring treatments based on individual genetic makeup as well. In the field of material science, traditional computers struggle to stimulate the behavior of molecules in complex materials like lithium-ion batteries which are present in all of our phones. Because these interactions involve quantum phenomenon, which is electron behavior, these calculation becomes exponentially harder for our regular computers as the number of atoms keep increasing. A quantum computer can model these quantum interactions directly and explore molecular configurations that improves energy density and charge cycles. Imagine this could lead to the discovery of a battery material that charges faster, lasts longer, and has smaller environmental footprints, accelerating advancements in electrical vehicles and renewable energy storage. Managing supply chain, optimizing delivery routes, or improving urban traffic systems all involve highly complex optimization problems. Quantum computers can evaluate countless variables simultaneously, finding the best solution in real time. When it comes to artificial intelligence, AI can benefit enormously from computational prowess of quantum systems. Quantum computers can analyze massive data sets in a fraction of the time that it takes our classical computers, enabling faster developments of smarter algorithms. For example, they can enhance pattern recognition in complex systems like weather forecasting or medical diagnostics, making AI application more robust and effective in these fields. Quantum computing poses both a challenge and a solution in the field of encryption. Today's modern-day encryption is based on methods like RSA, which is quickly factoring large numbers. Quantum computers can decipher these encryption in an instant and make this world's information be easily understood without any safety layers. On the other hand, it enables development of quantum-resistant encryption methods, which will offer unparalleled level of security by detecting any attempts at interception itself. Hence, there's a huge national security risk that comes along with operating of quantum computers. We, my friends, are standing on the edge of new technological era. A quantum computer won't replace your laptop or your phone. They will do something far more exciting. They will solve the unsolvable and explore the unexplorable. This journey into the quantum realm is just the beginning and the possibilities are limitless. So are you ready to join the quantum revolution? Let's unlock the future one qubit at a time. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel that tells YouTube that you enjoy videos like this. And hopefully in future, it will show you more stuff related to quantum computers and maybe some of mine too.